the Anglican Church of Trinidad and Tobago, in celebration of its 150th anniversary, presents our daily scripture reflection. Good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Recently, in a reading from St. Luke's Gospel, we heard that Jesus had set his face to Jerusalem. One wonders about his determination to go to that place. In spite of his assessment of the city and its people, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, murderer of prophets, killer of the ones who brought you, brought you God's news. As one modern day follower of Jesus says, a campesina in Nicaragua, she says, I'm not a well-read woman, but reading the Gospels, I always see the bravery of Jesus. Jesus is a brave man. Just as there are today so many men and women who are so brave, who aren't afraid to denounce injustice. Yes, Luke tells us that he set his face to Jerusalem and immediately he experiences the kind of rejection from the Samaritan village that would foreshadow the ultimate rejection that he would be meted out to him in Jerusalem. Our gospel passage today is taken from Luke chapter 23 and we'll be reading from verses 44 through 47 and 46. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. A wise one has said that we have two gifts from God, our one life and our one death. We have to live our one life and die our one death. Luke shows us Jesus dying his one death, accompanied by some seemingly holy other luminous events. The sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. In the Old Testament, the darkening of the sun was a sign of judgment associated with the day of the Lord. As Isaiah says, darkness will come upon the false prophets and rulers of Israel. But the question remains, what is Luke saying with this reference to darkness? I quote, For some darkness is a cosmic sign that often accompanied the deaths of great men and kings. The darkness over the land in Luke, therefore, may be understood as a cosmic sign of the significance of the death of Jesus for all the world, an omen of God's judgment on the leaders of Israel and a tribute to the death of the King of Kings. And now a reminder about the veil of the temple. It was hung at the entrance to the most holy place in the temple. In early days, no one could enter through the veil except Levitical priests. In latter times, no one but the high priest on the Day of Atonement at Jesus' death, according to Matthew and Mark, and at his crucifixion, in Luke's account, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, thus exposing the most holy place to view. The meeting place of God with humankind was now open to all. In the letter to the Hebrews, the veil is used as a symbol of the flesh of Christ by which believers may enter into the inner shrine of faith. Therefore, the rending of the veil may mean that all now have access to the presence of God, or, as the author of Ephesians puts it, the Messiah has made things up between us so that we are now together on this, both non-Jewish outsiders and Jewish insiders. He has torn down the wall that we use to keep each other at a distance. 
so that all may now approach God on an equal basis through the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus was the rending of the veil in the temple. Therefore, prepares the way for the gospel to be preached openly and unhindered. Mark in his gospel has Jesus dying with a loud cry, a cry of dereliction or abandonment. Luke has us hear a loud voice but a prayer of consecration, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A quotation from Psalm 31 verse 5. Jesus, who has been handed over to people like Pilate and Herod and Caiaphas, now commends himself into the hands of God. In Luke, Jesus does not die abandoned by God but with full confidence in the one whom he addressed as Father. Prayer has undergirded Jesus' mission and ministry, so we can expect him to pray as he is dying his one death. He prayed earnestly to God the night before he died. He began his praying time on the cross with a prayer for those who did not know what they were doing. And it has been said that his serenity in the face of death became a model for Stephen, the first Christian martyr, who at his own death also prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Luke records Jesus' death simply. He breathed his last. Whereas Mark tells us there was a loud cry, Luke has Jesus use a loud voice to share his dying prayer, commending his spirit into his father's hands. Father Andrew, in his reflection on the seventh word from the cross, says, Every Jewish mother taught her child to say, as its night prayer, Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Blessed Mary had put his little hands together and taught him to say it. And now with his hands held wide to all the world, having first finished the work which had been given him to do, he commends his spirit to his father. Every year, on Good Friday, together with the centurion, the crowds, and Jesus' friends, we see and hear Jesus living his one life and dying his one death. The centurion speaks, Certainly this man was innocent. Pilate had said the same thing, and so had Herod. The criminal on the cross also said he was without guilt. Luke also said the centurion praised God as several had responded in like manner to Jesus' works of mercy. His actions, his healings led people to glorify God when he taught in the temple, healed the sick, or raised the dead. The crowds had also seen and may have heard just what the centurion experienced. They said nothing, but their actions spoke louder than words. They beat their breasts. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, to my fault. Jesus' dear friends take it all in. They stand and stare and go home to prepare their spices for the morrow. And this witness I offer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Brought to you by the Anglican Church of Trinidad and Tobago, celebrating its Triple Jubilee.